Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here, friends. Today I want to talk about all the comments that we have received in the last five days and I'm going to respond to them. With that said, let's get started. Welcome back, friends. We are here in the comment section and I would be looking at the screen. So many times I might not be talking to you directly, but looking at the screens to read the comments. The latest comments that we have received around four hours ago is from Hugh Ed Carlos. Um, he says, hi Raj, thanks always for your videos. I'm bullish on genomics and your videos help me a lot. Thanks to hear that, it makes me feel good. I uh, appreciate if you could analyze fate therapeutics. Yeah, I have done fate in the past, I think. I'll do it again. Uh, it's been up recently. Oh, so basically you want to find out why it is up and whether it's sustainable. I'll uh, definitely take a look into that as soon as possible. Also, Bionanogenomics, do you see this company growing as a sequential methods or do you have different vision? Thanks. So Bionanogenomics, I don't think uh, was looking that great. So I'm looking at uh, Bionanogenomics price chart out here. I mean, it's almost microscopic. Uh, the fundamentals are on this chart are all looking very, very weak. So I don't think we should put our energy out here because there are so many other great stocks available uh, inside and out of genomics. On one end, you have all these big stocks like Meta and all flying off the handle. So I think it will be a bad obsession to um, focus on buy and genomics. And I think I look at PACB, which is... Uh, again, a much bigger company and has got a wider range of um, uh, hardware as well as uh, uh, supplies. And if you look at Illumina, I think Illumina is a turnaround story because they are, they are going to be rid of Grail by the middle of uh, this year. And what is to stop them from regaining their past glories? Things are going to improve. Uh, they had great results as well. So I think uh, BioNano should do very well. I have a relative strength comparison indicator here where I'm comparing uh, Illumina with uh, QQQ. Uh, Illumina is doing fantabulous out here. And if you look at uh, PACB, PACB is not so much. And if you look at uh, BioNanogenomics, it's also not doing that great. So overall, I think Illumina is much bigger of a winner out here. And we are not even looking at Thermo Fisher, which is again a big giant. Uh, which did not have that great results of late, but it does so many things apart from sequencing machines and all that. So that would be my answer to you, my friend. Uh, next, let us look at the other one, Ruffian, in saying, like parties. Yeah, Meta and Amazon are throwing a party. Yes, Inf, you are most welcome. And then another user says, thanks, Raj, for a great summary, especially for end of the week. You cover almost the entire spectrum of my personal investment. Thank you very much uh, for the compliment. I have a couple of points to share and get your thoughts when you can. Industry effect, automotive, metro, Detroit area, about mass multiple layoffs on automotive or semiconductor stocks, and two ripple effects of market cooling during February or March on genomics. And three, genomics partners like Vertex going down recently. Is there any positive effect of such big pharmas uh, due to companies like CRISPR, EDT, etc.? Okay, let us do this one by one. So first of all, thank you for the compliment and also for the question. Uh, with regard to automotive-related demand, I'm not much worried about the uh, impact of that on the semiconductor stocks because the biggest driver now is uh, AI chips. And um, NVIDIA is talking about sovereign AI. So it's um, it's on a different league altogether. AMD is the next one to catch up with it. Intel is going towards the foundry business. And there are so many other smaller uh, chip companies. So, I mean, any of them can pick up the slack. Uh, and if there's a demand destruction, it's not going to hurt the really big ones. Uh, apart from... Uh, the Detroit area, there are uh, globally, there are so many auto companies, so chips will be sold here or there, wherever. And in the past, we have had more of a chip shortage issue rather than a uh, chip surplus issue. So I think it's something that I wouldn't too much worry about right now. This is my personal opinion, of course, not financial advice. Ripple effect of market cooling during February or March on genomics. Well, let's look at this chart, which has come from the Ned Davis research. And... Um, uh, I would like to 
take your attention uh, to the two democratic um, uh, options out here. One is the thick blue line which says incumbent party, uh, democratic party wins, and the other is the thinner line, uh, blue line, which says incumbent Demo democratic party loses. So if you assume that the Democratic Party is going to lose, still we are seeing the drop coming somewhere around February and March is when it's at the very bottom and around April it starts picking up. And if you assume that the Democratic Party is going to win, uh, then I think somewhere around middle or last, last week of February, the market starts falling and it reaches its bottom somewhere in March. And then it picks up again and goes down, so on and so forth. But that seems to be the lowest point uh, for the market for the year in March. So this is the chart I have been keeping in my mind. This is historical chart. Uh, this is looking back on time. Uh, it consists of all the presidential years, which have all these uh, uh, different combinations possible. And I think uh, the same trend might potentially happen even now. So either Democratic Party wins or loses, March is going to be uh, at the bottom. Now that I have explained where I come from with the idea uh, that uh, the market could drop in uh, February, March area, I think if the market drops in February and March, I don't think it's going to help genomics uh, as much because genomics sector anyway, it's a uh, high risk. So it will have the same volatility that it's having right now, but it may probably have more red days than green. Um, so that's the way I look at this. One exception could be CRISPR therapeutics where there'll be good opportunities probably to get into it because if it falls below the 60s and goes somewhere into the 50s, I think that's a good buy. But again, personal opinion, not financial advice. Next question is genomic partners like Vertex going down recently. Is there any positive effect of such big pharma due to, uh, of such big pharma due to companies like CRISP or Reddit? I think that most of those uh, big pharma are themselves trying to uh, uh, increase their cell biology section or um, or uh, gene therapy section. So they are taking over a lot of um, uh, genomic companies. Most of them are not in our watch list. They are much smaller companies. They are being taken over. And uh, the pipeline for these big uh, companies is being replenished. Even Vertex, for that matter, uh, tied up with uh, CRISPR therapeutics, uh, tied up with uh, Viacite. So they do a lot of tie-ups and they do acquisitions wherever possible. Uh, so uh, I, I don't think uh, uh, the big pharma will suffer. I think all the boats will be lifted and we are moving into a genomic medicine trend where earlier incurable diseases will now be cured and so we are expanding the pie size of the market. There will be a lot of... Um, uh, health situations where um, genomics is not going to help, where small molecules and large molecules drugs will still continue to help. But then we are looking at mRNA, siRNA, and uh, CRISPR-Cas9. So one set, the CRISPR-Cas9 beam, uh, um, uh, I think uh, base editing and prime editing will tackle gen genetic diseases. Then you have the mRNA, which might be used to tackle protein-related diseases and vaccinations and stuff like that. And of course, I spoke about the self-amplifying RNA. That's another category that is slowly developing. That will be a turbocharged mRNA machine. So those will all handle protein-related um, um, uh, health issues and also uh, creating antigens for vaccinating the body. So those areas, they will be there. Uh, so that's the way I'm looking at it. I don't see uh, traditional markets where you have headache, you have um, things which are not caused by genes or things which are not caused by bacteria and other things. So those uh, those diseases will still need the standard, uh, standard of care that's currently available. So that was a very long answer. Now let's go ahead. Next uh, we have... Uh, Listerias 123. Hi Raj, what are your thoughts about Caribou Biosciences' latest spike in stock price? I have heard that new data will come in the next two months. Can you please make another video on Caribou? Absolutely, I'll make another video on Caribou. I'll also investigate the uh, price spike that you have seen there. Uh, no problems at all. We'll take care of it. Uh, basically, Caribou is a good stock. I like that. Next is Karthik Bhatia says, uh, Thoughts on ARWR, please. This company is a terrific RNA interference technology. It, it In a good pipeline, Arrowhead had a terrific presentation at JPM. 
CEO thinks that uh, CEO, CEO thinks both Plaza Siren and Zoda Siren can be blockbusters. They both have shown a profound effect on cardio metabolic data, showcasing an ability to target a whole range of genes for lipids, not simply trying to lower LDL. I'll absolutely check this out, Karthik. Uh, thanks for the pointer. We'll have a look. Let me just quickly go and add ARWR uh, to this, uh, ARWR, Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals, okay. We added it here. Let us quickly take a look at what this looks like. Stock is trading at 31.96 and it's looking interesting out here. Um, we let have a look at um, this share for sure. Let me, we'll, we'll check this out. Uh, very, very good uh, suggestion, uh, Karthik. Uh, thanks for that. I'll, I'll check it out and I'll make a video on that very soon. Next is um, Futop, Fut Future PhD. Uh, my strategy is just to dollar cost average in whether it's a f fearful or greedy market. Nobody uh, can time the market. No one can expect that in 2023, big tech will reach all time highs. So you never know what's in store for this year. Absolutely, the market, we don't know what's going to happen at any given point of time. All we can do is look at all the fundamentals, look at the technicals, look at the news, and uh, try to be as safe as possible. We have to take part in the market to get the growth. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want to be uh, holding the falling knife. We don't want to try to catch the falling knife and hurt ourselves. Be careful with your dollar cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging is a good strategy when you are, uh, when the share price is going down. In a bull market, it's better to sell in small installments and catch as much gain as possible while going up. So they are two complementary strategies. So since we are in a bull market, I don't think you should be dollar cost averaging because you'll be averaging your cost up. You should do that in the bear market. That's my opinion. And that too, it should be done on really good blue chip stocks, which are definitely going to bounce back. That said, let us look at um, James Dean, who is saying, hello, sir, I purchased 10,000 shares of Bluebird Bio stocks. James, it is a very risky um, situation right now with Bluebird, especially because the stock has become below $1. And if we just quickly look at the Bluebird um, uh, stock out here, you will see that it's 95 cents right now. Uh, it's become a penny stock. And NASDAQ has this policy of asking companies which go below $1 uh, to improve their uh, share price and look at what is happening because they don't want over dilution. They don't like penny stocks out there. So they might be getting a letter from NASDAQ soon. So as long as they are listed here, it's fine. The stock will be liquid. If they are not listed here, then you have to go to OTC or somewhere. It's not going to be great. The commissions will be much higher and making a profit will be difficult. Um, of course, 10,000 looks like a lot, uh, but given the share price, right, it all depends on how much of money from your entire portfolio you're putting here. I would say that genomics does not deserve such a high allocation of your portfolio because it is a high risk, high reward. So you should be making money on the trusted ones which are giving really good returns. And you should put a little bit of your portfolio based on your age profile and risk profile into genomics. And uh, within genomics, you have to diversify. So that's my uh, personal advice, uh, not financial advice. Uh, it's my personal opinion. So that's what I would say. Uh, next is um, that uh, says, sir, please, Hindi language. No, this is not for HIV or anything. No. Next, uh, Yuraj says, uh, cure coming. I can't discuss. No, I don't want to talk about HIV on this one. I just want to look at are regular ones, okay. Uh, Bolak seven four seven two five says, I understand if he stepped down, he never find a job anywhere, but you running for 20 years, stock down to 99%, my friend. So this is a feedback to Sandeep on Bluebird. Uh, I agree, I, I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we had to just put a small portion of our uh, portfolio in there, and Sandeep was uh, doing a closer look at Bluebird because we are seeing all these uh, uh, drop in prices, and we are wondering what is going to happen to Bluebird uh, with uh, three really good uh, approved therapies uh, in the uh, in their pocket, uh, and also tie-ups with uh, various insurance company for subsidizing it. Uh, and now, as I published in my earlier video, 
uh, where I was talking about how the US government is now uh, directly negotiating with the manufacturers for sickle cell disease. This is the first, this is the first um, uh, gene therapy that the government is partnering with to subsidize and provide it to patients across the, all the states of United States. So all those things will definitely help, but I agree with you, uh, uh, Boldock said that uh, um, we can't put all the money in there because the future of Bluebird is quite uncertain. They don't have sufficient capital. Uh, next is dollar one, my friend. Could you do a video? Tell CEO to step down, please. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have that kind of a clout. They won't listen to us. We are a small TV channel. No, stop drinking Starbucks. You should buy two shares. <laughs> I like your sense of humor, Bodak. Then we are looking at um, user of 3LT. Make your reach out to the world. Okay, that's again a HIV comment. Let's skip. James Dean says, hi, teacher. Can I buy... Uh, Bullbird bio stock now. <laughs> I can't be delisted, right? <laughs> you guys are trolling us, are you? You're trolling. You're trolling us for Bluebird. At one point of time, we were all focused on Bluebird. Now it seems to be a party pooper. <laughs> yeah, you never know what will happen with uh, Bluebird. Ivan says, "Congrats on the rapid growth. Thank you so much, Ivan." And um, next, we come to. Uh, five days ago, we had Banu Vora saying, thanks for uh, deciding to cover AI companies. Yes, I'm absolutely excited about covering AI companies. Uh, in fact, I've already started with the uh, first watch list. Right now, both are coming together in one video. I'm planning to separate them out uh, going forward. And I'll be doing in-depth video on each of those companies in the AI uh, section because I think that's going to be important. Uh, I'm still looking for uh, genomic companies which are deploying AI actually for their uh, uh, target discovery and for um, vetting the success uh, of any of their uh, drugs, potential drugs. So those things I'm also looking at. I haven't found any, but you know, one searches Google, it's like a big ocean. I might find something or one of our subscribers may let us know. Uh, just like I got uh, feedback from Karthik, I'll get a few name of few companies and check them out. Next is, uh, this is for Verve. Uh, user SU1 says, excellent video. I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge. Thank you very much, Michael. And um, yeah, I, I, I try to share my personal opinion. I wouldn't term it as knowledge. I'm just a regular investor like yourself, but with a channel and with a little bit of guts to talk about it in the open. Uh, any day I can be proved wrong on anything that I say. So I'm really happy that you like it. And But always be careful. Follow your own instinct as well. Next is uh, Truth Hurts 2023 saying, Go Illumina. Yes, I'm rooting for Illumina. Uh, Illumina should do very well. I think that their commitment to dispose of Grail by middle of this year is something that is music to my ears. And I'm thinking that around that time, it will be too late to catch Illumina. Again, this is my personal opinion, not financial advice. I only have 10 Illumina. I want to buy more. But uh, right now, my focus is on FNGU because I want my target of my profits for this year to be taken up from FNGU. So... When I sell FNGU, I'm going to buy a little more Illumina when the market falls because that's when I want to pick it up. That's my strategy, my friend. Uh, that said, let's look at the next one. Uh, Netflix is live. I will not unsubscribe because it's extremely convenient for the kids to pick and choose what to watch on him. It's expensive though and I have top tier. Yeah, Ali, that's, uh, that's a very good feedback. Even I have Netflix. Uh, and um, yeah, this is in response to Sandeep's Netflix video. I think Netflix is a, a pretty good company. It has been a pioneer in the field and uh, it's gone into this WWE, which is again a big blockbuster. And um, uh, I think apart from Netflix, I also have Amazon. I'm also bullish on Amazon because not only does it have cloud, uh, AWS uh, going really good. They are getting into AI and also uh, they have Amazon Prime. Now, in Prime, you don't get the same quality of videos that you get in Netflix. But come to think of it, if anybody is paying for Prime, they get free shipping. And if they are getting free shipping and on top of that, they are getting to see a few videos, 
why not so prime has got a lot of stickiness in my opinion uh, even though the quality of the program may not always be that great but they have come up with some really good programs also uh, now that they're going to charge now that amazon is going to charge for returns as well i think their bottom line is going to improve a lot and um, amazon is also something to watch about but of course netflix it's standing tall among a crowded field disney also tried uh, but i think um, despite having a great quality of portfolio disney could not beat uh, netflix so yeah i agree with you next is uh, netflix and chill sandman so these are people who are i think probably known to sandeep and they are <laughs> sandeep is saying that spreadsheet was titled netflix and fun <laughs> okay next what do we have here uh, okay that's about it so th that's all we had uh, as comments uh, during the week i will not venture to go into health for review because a lot of uh, crazy comments out there which we don't want to see uh, and um, i'll just wind up with that well friends that was my feedback for the comments uh, section and uh, i'm really uh, thrilled and happy i'm happy because uh, one of the strategies that i had for this year for the channel has been achieved we have successfully separated the hindi hiv content from uh, this channel and moved it into the HIV global channel and I'm really really happy to report that in the last two days we have had almost uh, 2,000 plus subscribers out there and that new channel has crossed uh, 6,000 subscribers in a matter of eight months since its inception and in the last two days it, it jumped up from uh, somewhere around 2,900 I think 3,900 all the way up to 6,000 uh, 6000 plus so it's been a great success and we have um, uh, we have subtitles in multiple languages uh, so that's also attracting people uh, so i'm really happy and thrilled to report that it's growing very well and the other aspect of my happiness is that now we have a clean slate out here to focus purely on genomics and uh, ai I'm really thrilled about introducing AI into the channel. So we're going to do both of that. And I'm very happy that Sandeep is contributing regularly to this channel. So overall, I'm really blessed. 2024 has started very well. And I also thank all of you genomic viewers who have stuck to me right from the beginning, even though we had a lot of HIV content coming in in between and we are developing that audience. You have been patient. So now you're going to get a pure uh, genomics and AI experience. And I hope you like that. So thanks a lot. Have a great day and a great weekend. Bye for now.